Hi guys, in today's video I want to talk about gouache and poster colors and tempera. Are they the same thing? We'll figure that out together. But first, this video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare again. As you already know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes about a lot of topics, like photography, illustration and much more. Since this video is about gouache, I want to share with you this class that I'm following by Leah Gordon. In another video, I showed you another class by her where she shows her creative process while using gouache and in this class she teaches how she uses gouache and all the techniques that she uses. And I think that's really interesting and if you just got into gouache, I definitely suggest you to check that class. If you're not familiar with Leo Gorin, she has a beautiful standout style. And the way she approaches painting, it's so inspiring. She doesn't even use pencil, she goes directly with paint and like, wow. Anyway, on Skillshare you can find art classes and much more. So whether you want to fuel your creativity or curiosity, Skillshare probably has something for you. It's also pretty affordable with less than $10 per month with the annual subscription. But if you want to try it for free, use the link that I have in the description and you will get two months of premium Skillshare for free. So I highly recommend you to check it out. And yeah, let's move on to the video. So as you can see in today's video, I'm practicing with gouache. And what better way to do it than painting Natalie Portman as Matilda. Okay, I must admit that the drawing that I made was a little bit weak. It wasn't very precise, so at the end the finished painting doesn't really resemble her that much. But it's fine because it's just something that's gonna stay in the sketchbook and it's something that I made to practice with gouache. So it didn't have to be perfect to begin with. To paint this, I mostly used yellow ochre, white, burnt sienna, burnt umber, some red and orange here and there, and black. I just use a mix of those colors to make the skin tones and basically everything. I have to say that painting this was actually easier than I thought it was going to be because the paper in this sketchbook doesn't have much sizing on, which it's tough when you use it to paint with watercolors, but it works great with gouache. Sizing, guys, is a sort of layer of primer that's on every type of paper. But it's also different depending on the kind of paper. For example, the sizing that um, watercolor paper has is probably different from the sizing that drawing paper has. This paper in particular in the sketchbook has very little sizing and that makes the paper more absorbent and a little bit more fragile because sizing is also used to make the paper stronger. And with gouache, that really works out well. You probably know that since gouache can be really wet, sometimes it's difficult to make layers with it because um, the layers keep lifting as you re-wet them. But this paper made it much easier because it's more absorbent. So that helped tremendously. Now you're probably wondering what brand of paint I'm using. And I'm using a very cheap Winsor Newton set, one of those that are sold on AliExpress. I checked the Chinese website of Winsor & Newton and they are real, but they only make them in China. It's like the craft slash hobby line of paints that Winsor & Newton has there. On the box of this paint, it's written that they're actually poster colors, but poster colors, tempera and gouache, guys, are pretty much the same thing. They behave exactly the same when you use them. Let me give you a little overview about the history of what is now most commonly called gouache. Back in the days before old paints were invented, painters painted with a technique called tempera grassa, which was a type of paint that was made with eggs and oils and pigments. But tempera was not only that. There was another type of tempera that was 100% water-based. Instead of eggs as binders, they used gum arabic or animal glue and was of course diluted with water and it was called tempera magra. It was very often used in medieval times to paint miniature and, and books. It was also called guazzo because of the puddle slash mud-like consistency that it had and still has. Indeed, gouache behaves pretty much like mud as it dries very opaque and it has the same consistency. So I don't think that calling gouache tempera is wrong, it's like the same exact thing. In Italy, indeed, we still call it tempera and Unless it's specified that it's tempera grassa, while it's sold in tubes, it's always tempera magra. We just dropped the magra, because nobody used tempera grassa anymore. 
Even though now they are changing the name on the packaging and call it a gouache because the word gouache is more used. But anyway, since painters used to make their paint on their own in the past, everyone would make it in the consistency and opacity that they liked the most. From here, a lot of type of paints were developed, for example, watercolors. They became incredibly popular and because it was easy to carry them around and to sketch, and like the rest is history, like they were, they are still very, very popular. Since watercolors became a type of paint of their own, people use gouache when they need their more opacity. Watercolors became so popular that gouache started to be called opaque watercolors. In general, watercolors were more used in England and gouache became more popular in France. That's why it's called gouache nowadays, because it's the French word for guazzo. So, as you can see, gouache was always used in history in different consistency. When cinema was invented, the first film posters were all illustration. Actually, not the first, like the first... Until the 80s, they were mostly illustration. And guess what? type of paint they used the most, gouache. Even though overall film posters were mostly made with mixed media, they used gouache a lot, so much that later they became known as poster colors. So my conclusion is that poster colors, gouache and tempera are the same thing. As in the past, every artist makes it his own paint in a desired opacity and consistency, also brand of art supplies make and call gouache differently. So, whether it's called gouache, tempera or poster colors, it's basically the same damn thing, because it's made with pretty much the same ingredients. Now, since every brand makes it differently, you might have to find your own brand that you like the most. And use that, because you can find a gouache um, in a more liquid form, uh, in jars, you can find in tubes, but not every tube of gouache it's the same because some some are more opaque, some are just less opaque, some are more vibrant, some are more muted. It all depends from the brand because gouache has never been something that was consistent. Consistent, uh, even though things now might change because uh, gouache recently is becoming very popular. So brands might focus more. On gouache again and develop it faster and improve the quality of the paints themselves because gouache was underestimated and forgotten for a while so i think that gouache is going more towards the same direction so more brands are making gouache in the same way because there are certain types of gouache that are more used nowadays i hope it's more clear now i like i feel very strongly about this um the plot the fact that nobody knows much about it is because gouache it's not like something defined because everyone make it in their own way it's different in every brand so anyway um i had a lot of fun painting matilda in this video and i definitely one day will paint her more accurately and more precisely and hopefully better but for now um i hope you enjoy this video and i hope you enjoyed watching me painting it and i hope you enjoy <laughs> hearing about what I know about gouache, uh, which might not be everything that there is to know, probably it is not. This is just like an overview, like a general history of, of gouache. If you have any information that you would like to share about gouache, write a comment to explain your point of view. I'll leave you to the rest of the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate and ask in the comments and I will reply to you. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye bye guys!